The new lease standard will require virtually all leases to be recorded on a company's balance sheet. The lease term is one of the key input that can impact the classification and measurement of the lease. Identifying the lease term may not always be straightforward, and getting this wrong could have a significant impact on the company's accounting for leases. Hi, I'm Priya Singleton, Quality Control Officer at Blue & Company. Let's talk about some of the key considerations for determining the lease term and how the lease term impacts short-term leases. To determine the lease term, you start with the non-cancelable period in the lease and add the renewable option periods for renewals the lessee is reasonably certain to exercise, as well as the periods covered by termination options if the lessee is reasonably certain of not exercising that option. Lastly, you add any optional periods to extend or to terminate the lease that is controlled by the lessor. This sounds like a simple formula, right? But there are nuances here to consider. For instance, the treatment of renewal and termination options is dependent on whether the lessee is reasonably certain to exercise the option. What does that even mean? This concept of reasonably certain in the new lease guidance is the same as reasonably assured in the previous lease accounting guidance. This is a pretty high threshold and should be based on factors present at the commencement of the lease and should create an economic incentive for the lessee either to exercise or not exercise the option. Let's say the renewal option in your lease includes below market rental rates. That would incentivize you to renew the lease. Or say you have made significant leasehold improvements, so much so that not extending the lease would cause those to be impaired. Or you may realize that you're going to incur significant relocation costs that could be avoided if you just extended the lease. You get the idea. All these factors need to be considered together to determine if the exercise of an option is reasonably certain. This analysis is one of the areas that's probably going to require significant judgment, and it is key in determining the lease term, which in turn impacts the lease classification as well as lease measurement. The lease term also determines whether the lease qualifies for the short-term lease exemption. The short-term exemption could provide relief when adopting the new standard, as these leases will not need to be capitalized on the lessee's balance sheet. Instead, the lease payments would be recognized as an expense on a straight-line basis over the lease term. So what qualifies as a short-term lease? A short-term lease is a lease that, at the commencement date, has a lease term of 12 months or less and does not include an option to purchase the underlying asset that the lessee is reasonably certain to exercise. Let's take a closer look at this definition. First, you need to determine the contractual lease term at the commencement date of the lease. This evaluation is not based on the remaining lease term at the time that you elect the new guidance. The total lease term must be 12 months or less at commencement to qualify for the exemption. No exceptions. For example, assume you have a lease with a commencement date of July 1, 2020, and a term of two years. You transition to the new lease standard on January 1, 2022. When applying this exemption, this lease is not eligible because its lease term is more than 12 months at the commencement date, even though the remaining term of the lease at transition is six months. Also, the renewal and termination options need to be considered when evaluating whether a lease is truly short-term. A one-year lease where you're reasonably certain to exercise a renewal option is not a short-term lease. Also, it is fairly common for companies to enter into very short-term leases, such as month-to-month -month lease, rolling leases, or leases with no stated lease terms. Such leases are in the scope of the new standard, just like other leases. You will need to reassess whether it is reasonably certain to exercise the renewal or termination options, as well as the existence of similar options controlled by the lessor. Looking at the economic incentives that the lessee has to exercise the option will be important. Very short, non-cancelable lease term may indicate a strong economic incentive for the lessee to exercise renewal options. Some lease contracts do not contain a lease term. Such leases may be day-to-day -day with the lessee paying a fee for each day the underlying asset is used. These leases would still be subject to the requirements of determining the lease term. The non-cancelable lease period may be determined to be one day, and renewal options for each subsequent day would need to be reassessed as to whether they are reasonably certain of being exercised. Given the extremely short lease term, the lessee may have a strong economic incentive to continue the lease and exercise the renewal options. To learn more about determining the lease term and how the lease term impacts the different types of leases, 
please click on the link below and download Blue & Company's ASC 842 Lessee Implementation Guide.